Whiskey Disneyland. <laughs> All right. Wow, thank you. Hey, yeah. How are you? Yeah. Wow, just safety fighting. Biding its time, building up its strength a wee bit. Oh well. That's it. On to the woods. I think he's done. Oh, the whole thing is that These casks won't see the light of day for at least three years. Some not for twelve or even fifty years. During this period of maturation, a whiskey's unique final flavour is further enhanced by the wood of the cask that it's stored in. Its clear colour changed to a golden hue. In the map. So down here in the south in yellow, you've got the lowlands. Further north in purple, we have the highlands. You've then got a blue section for the Speyside, and then down to the southwest, the green tip for Campbelltown, and the red section for Isla. Now those five Isla. different colours will match up to the aroma cards I passed out to you on the way in. Aroma with the idea of being at once prompted to adopt and characteristic. And so folks, and now that we've travelled across Scotland, to each of the five different whisky regions and discussed their distinctive characteristics. I'm full of ice and gaze. Whiskey was made. We then discussed how the different regions can play an all important role in determining that whiskey's character. But we're now going to move on to talk about grain whiskey. So, back in the 1830s, this gentleman here, Aeneas Coffee, invented this the coffee or continuous still, which not only made a whiskey from malted barley, but a combination of other grains that was his or her grain whiskey. That will make up about 80% of the bottom. They will then consider the appropriate single malt whiskies to add. So, if they're looking for more of a light style, they might use more lowland or space-side single malts. Whereas, if they're looking for more of a meaty style, they might use more highland or camel town single malts. And as much as I love them, Master blenders tend to use Isla single malts more sparingly, as their smokier qualities risk overpowering the rest of the blend. One way to look at it might be to say that with a good blend, none of the individual component whiskies should stand out, but instead when it comes together and it's balanced, that's when it's at its best. To explain better, here's a stolen single malt, place your glass onto the yellow syrup for a nice light grassy style of whiskey. If you're looking for more of a floral style, place your glass onto the purple syrup for a highland single <laughs> malt. If you're looking for something perhaps slightly fruitier, place your glass onto the blue circle for a space side single malt. If you're looking to try a whiskey with more of a coastal influence, <laughs> place your glass onto the green circle for a Campbelltown single malt. And if that smoky either style is for you, you place your glass onto the red circle. If you're not undecided or not too sure, consider placing your glass onto the multicoloured circle to receive a blended Scotch whisky, just what we've been speaking about in here. Now, me and my colleagues. Hey guys, I'm here. I'm going to blend me too. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Alright folks, you're gonna follow me through and uh, we're gonna do a short tasting of the other 
，哇，拉吉斯威士忌 collection 啊，哇，真系好坚哦，嚯、哦，哇，好坚哦，黐线哦。<笑> Surrounded by whisky， 黐線啊真係 ！Oh my goodness， 真係 my goodness 啊！哇，仲有㗎，一直 spin 過去。These bottles, these boxes laid out, so that you can work out exactly what's in the glass in front of you. You're more than welcome to pick those up if you want to read the information on the sides of the back to find out more about what makes your whiskey unique. Um, now, here at the Scotch Whiskey Experience, I think there's one question that we get asked more often than any others, and it's simply put as, "How should I drink my Scotch whiskey?" So the uh, whiskey experience here is owned by the industry, owned by several different distillers, and so it's quite easy for us to go off and ask them, "What do they think? How do they want their whiskey to be drunk?" So they came back to us and they told us that you can drink their whiskey any way that you like it. So you can drink it neat or by adding water, ice, milk, Red Bull, milk? however you fancy it. Now, but here in Scotland, there's a set of steps that the distillers go through to assess the quality of their whiskey. Five steps that we can go through together. So first, you need to hold the glass up to the light to assess the colour. A natural colour. If the whiskey is a light, pale colour. It's probably been stored in an American ex bourbon barrel, whereas if it's a darker, more rich colour, that might indicate that another type of cask has been used, and that will very much affect the flavours involved. Swirl to allow the legs, the teardrops, to form around the rim of the glass. So on one hand, if they're quite narrow, quite fast to run down the glass, that's a good indicator of a more light-bodied style. Whereas if it's a bit more oily, a bit more viscous, a better indicator of a more full-bodied style. Tasting the whiskey really only confirms what the nose has already told you. But when you're ready, we can move on to what's usually everyone's favourite step, which is of course tasting the whiskey. And again, you can taste it any way that you like it. You can sip and savour it. You can knock it back. I think there's an occasion for both. But here in Scotland, there's a toast traditionally done with whiskey, which comes from ancient Gaelic and it means good health. And it's written on the back of your aroma cards. It's pronounced slanjava. And so I'd like to propose a toast to us here today. Slanjava. Slanjava. The fifth and final step <laughs> is to assess the finish of the whiskey, the aftertaste, the afterglow, and kind of how long that lasts for. Which remained with Clive back home in Brazil until 2006, when he was approached by the drinks company Diageo with the intention of purchasing his collection. And so once Diageo acquired his collection for an undisclosed fee. It's brought here to the Scotch Whisky Experience in the heart of Edinburgh, so that we can show it off to an international audience and to kind of help to preserve its legacy. But I'd now like to give you a bit of time to have a look around, to explore, to take some photos. I'll remain down here at the front in case you've got any questions. 可能冇人啊！頭先我哋標入係咪冇人啊？唔得，我要慢慢彈。佢話呢啲啊，一樽就走去 auction， 全部都 auction level 啊！哇，勁啊，勁啊，我都要啊。Okay, folks, if you've been on tour with me this afternoon, you want to gather round for the final time. So,、uh, behind me in the glass, you can see the last 400 bottles that Clive was able to collect.、Um, as it turns out, if it contained whiskey, Clive was interested. And、um, so you've got、uh, bottles like the tiny little ones down to the bottom right hand corner. <laughs> The heads of these golf clubs to the chest set along to the left-hand side. The chest set is a particularly unique item. It's back in the 1980s. If you flew first class and only first class、uh, with British Caledonian Airways, you received one piece with whiskey inside. 
Clive was one of a very select few that was able to acquire the entire chess set. So he's clearly a man that travelled quite a lot. Uh, but elsewhere, you've got this section which details the history of Scotch whisky, how we got from the Middle East at a time before Jesus, to where we are today. For some of you, the main event may yet still be to come in the form of the McIntyre bar behind you. It's a selection of over four. I'm not going to like a whisky. I'm not trying to like a man of the whisky. I'm not trying to like a man of the whisky. I'm not trying to to whiskey number one there, and then to whiskey number four down there. Ah. Let us know exactly what you're drinking, what you can expect, and if you've any questions, like me or one of my colleagues, know. Okay, thank Enjoy. you. Enjoy. 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 Uh,这个就是很难的。这个就是很难的。这个就是很难的。这个就是很难的。这个就是很难的。这个就是很难的。这个就是很难的。这个就是很难的。这个就是很难的。这个就是很难的。这个就是很难的。这个就是很难的。